Today, I'm making a Mexican recipe for you, and I even got my Mexican recipe shirt on. It's gotta be hot to be good, and I'll tell you more about that a little bit later in the video. Anyway, we're making a butternut squash, black bean and corn, enchilada casserole. This thing is delicious. It serves a good amount of people, so it's great for, you know, small, a reasonably small group of people. Great for a potluck. And the flavors are outstanding. I'm Rockin' Robin, and I'm gonna show you how to make it right after my chef joke. Why did the tortilla chips start dancing? Because they put on the salsa. <laughs> so before we get into the recipe, I wanted to talk to you about this t-shirt that I had made in honor of my dad. When we used to have our restaurant, he would talk to the customers and when they served their meal, he would say, it's gotta be hot to be good. And he'd also throw in, it's delicious and nutritious and it will make you ambitious. So I've got some merch here for you. If anybody's interested, I'll leave a link in the description. Thanks in advance for supporting my channel. Now back to our recipe, we're gonna start off here with a butternut squash. Now I'm gonna cut mine up, but you could also buy it already cut up to save you some time. But here I'm gonna show you how to do it. So in the butternut squash, you've got two areas. One has the seeds, one doesn't. So this bulge at the bottom here, you can tell by the, the, the little stem there. There's a stem here, this is the top, this is the bottom. This is the end that's gonna have the seeds, just so you know. So I try and get mine that are the least amount of curves in it makes it easier for me to cut because I use a knife when I peel it. So I cut off the ends. And again, this is the side that has the seed. So usually what I do is I cut it in half. And this side is pretty much a solid piece of butternut squash. And again, this is the side that has the seed. So I just set it down and then I peel it with my knife. You can use whatever you want. So I'll take my knife and we'll just peel off the skin. When you get to this point, you're gonna cut it in half and we'll take a spoon and I'm gonna scrape that out. Then we'll cut the butternut squash into bite-sized chunks. Now you wanna preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm gonna place some parchment paper here on my baking sheet. And then I'll place the butternut squash on the sheet. I'll drizzle some olive oil over the top and then we'll add a little bit of salt to that and then we'll massage it in and then pop it in the oven to roast for about 40 minutes. Make sure to spread out the butternut squash in a single layer. Like I said, be sure and check this at about 40 minutes. It might go a little longer. Now we're gonna make our gluten-free enchilada sauce. So what I'm using here is some guitar semi-sweet baking chocolate and we just need a little bit here just to take the bitterness out of the sauce. I've got some chili powder, garlic powder, ground cumin, cinnamon, a little bit of sugar, and a little bit of salt. We'll also need some chicken stock, and to thicken this sauce up, we're gonna use some Bob's Red Mill one-to-one -one baking flour that is gluten-free. The great thing about this sauce is it only takes literally a few minutes to make. You're gonna love it. So grab yourself a stock pot and place that chicken broth right into it. Place your temperature on medium-high. We wanna get this nice and hot, and we're gonna add all those spices to the chicken broth. Just dump those right in, and then we'll add the chocolate. Grab a whisk, and when it comes to a simmer, we just want everything to dissolve. After this simmers for about five minutes, then we're going to mix up our thickening. So what I have here in this bowl is about eight tablespoons of cold water. And to that, I'm gonna add six tablespoons of Bob's Red Mill flour, and I'm gonna whisk in between each addition. Eventually, you're gonna get a nice thick consistency, something like this. Now we're ready to add the thickener, so I'm gonna turn the temperature up to high. I want this to boil really well when I add it and stir constantly so we don't get too many lumps. Now when you add the, the flour mixture, add it very slowly. Just drizzle in a little bit and whisk like crazy. What we're trying to do is just basically avoid the lumps. So just keep doing that a little bit at a time and just keep adding it and whisking. Once you get all the flour into the sauce, then you're gonna notice it's thickening up quite a bit and you're gonna stir it and let it cook, stirring occasionally here for about two to three minutes. Turn off the heat and now we'll go take our butternut squash out of the oven. Now we're about ready to start preparing our casserole. Let me show you my layout. 
I've got some mozzarella cheese here that I'm going to grate up and you can also use cheddar if you like. Both would work well. I also have some finely diced onion using some organic non-GMO corn which I'm going to drain and some canned black beans that I've drained. Now to make an enchilada casserole we're going to have to fry up some of our corn tortillas. I am using heart healthy olive oil here. This is a small, say six inch, maybe seven inch pan here because we don't want to use too much oil. We'll end up throwing it away. Now we're going to let that oil get hot because we need it to be about 350 degrees Fahrenheit before we can start dipping. And you'll see that the tortilla bubbles up right away. Now we're just dipping the tortillas in the oil. We want to coat them. We want to give them some flavor so this casserole tastes amazing. So that's why we do this. Flip the tortilla over and just leave it in for a couple more seconds and then take it right out. Use your tongs and place the tortilla on a paper towel covered plate. This will help absorb any excess oil. Once you've made two whole tortillas, now we're going to make some that are cut in half. So I'm just breaking these off and we're going to fry up two more tortillas like this so they fit better in the casserole dish. Once our tortillas are prepped up, then we're going to take our enchilada sauce and put a nice thin layer on the bottom of our 9 by 13 dish. If you're enjoying this video, let me know by smashing the like button. And now we'll lay those corn tortillas on top of the sauce. Next, we're going to add a layer of that butternut squash that's beautifully roasted. So we're going to use half of it because we're going to have two layers here. Now we're going to layer half of the black beans. Make sure to sprinkle it around so you get a little bit in every bite. And then half of the corn. Next, we'll sprinkle in a little bit of onion and then we'll finish it off with some cheese. At this point, you want to make sure that you're preheating your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit because this is going to go back in the oven. Now we're going to go back and repeat those layers once again, starting here with the enchilada sauce. Now you don't want to put too much because then it gets too saucy. So just drizzle some on all over like I'm doing here and just repeat those layers. So if you're a vegetarian or you just don't want to have meat at a particular meal, this is the recipe for you. You are going to love the flavors. And as I always say, it's the sauce that makes it. Now this is going in the oven at 375 for about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on just how long it takes. You want it to look something like this, where you've got everything nice and hot, the cheese is melted, it's bubbling all around, it is delicious this way. Now remember, it's gotta be hot to be good. Our casserole's in the oven, so it must be time for chef joke number two. All right, why did the bean sell his car? Because his back seat didn't have enough legume. <laughs> now here's how we want to serve this up. It comes out of the oven nice and hot. I've got a container here, a squeeze bottle full of sour cream. So I am putting a nice drizzle over the top. It goes beautifully here. And then I'm going to chop up some parsley, or you could use fresh cilantro, either one, and just sprinkle some on top. Can you tell me in the comments if this doesn't just make you so hungry? This is an amazing dish, and I hope you all try it. And if you know someone who's a Mexican food lover, please share this with them. They're going to love it. And have I got the most refreshing drink to go along with this casserole? Try my pineapple mango lemonade. Click the link on the screen, and it'll take you right to that recipe. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, let me know by smashing the old like button and share the video. That way more people can try these great recipes. All right, we'll see you back here next week for another delicious and healthy recipe.